The Mahayana sutras are a broad genre of Buddhist scriptures that various traditions of Mahayana Buddhism accept as canonical. They are largely preserved in the Chinese Buddhist canon, the Tibetan Buddhist canon, and in extant Sanskrit manuscripts. Around 100 Mahayana sutras survive in Sanskrit, or in Chinese and Tibetan translations. Mahayana sutras are passed down as the legacy of Gautama Buddha. Early versions were not written documents but orally preserved teachings said to be verses that were committed to memory and recited by his disciples, in particular Ananda, which were viewed as a substitute for the actual speech of the Buddha following his parinirvana. Death. History and background Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins and early history The origins of the Mahayana are not completely understood. The earliest views of Mahayana Buddhism in the West assumed that it existed as a separate school in competition with the Theravada schools. Due to the veneration of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Mahayana was often interpreted as a more devotional, lay-inspired form of Buddhism, with supposed origins in stupa veneration or by making parallels with the Reformation. These views have been largely dismissed in modern times in light of a much broader range of early texts that are now available. These earliest Mahayana texts often depict strict adherence to the path of a bodhisattva, an engagement in the ascetic ideal of a monastic life in the wilderness, akin to the ideas expressed in the Rhinoceros Sutra. The old views of Mahayana as a separate lay inspired and devotional sect are now largely dismissed as misguided and wrong on all counts. The early versions of Mahayana Sutras were not written documents but orally preserved teachings. The verses which were committed to memory and recited by monks were viewed as the substitute for the actual speaking presence of the Buddha. The earliest textual evidence of the Mahayana comes from sutras originating around the beginning of the Common Era. Jan Natyar has noted that in some of the earliest Mahayana texts, such as the Ugrapariparsha Sutra, use the term Mahayana, yet there is no doctrinal difference between Mahayana in this context and the early schools, and that Mahayana referred rather to the rigorous emulation of Gautama Buddha in the path of a bodhisattva seeking to become a fully enlightened Buddha there is also no evidence that Mahayana ever referred to a separate formal school or sect of Buddhism but rather that it existed as a certain set of ideals and later doctrines for bodhisattvas Paul Williams has also noted that the Mahayana never had nor ever attempted to have a separate vinaya or ordination lineage from the early Buddhist schools and therefore each bhikkhu or bhikkhuni adhering to the Mahayana formally belonged to an early school. This continues today with the Dharmaguptaka ordination lineage in East Asia and the Mulasarvastivada ordination lineage in Tibetan Buddhism. Therefore, Mahayana was never a separate rival sect of the early schools. The Chinese monk Yijing, who visited India in the 7th century, distinguishes Mahayana from Hinayana as follows Both adopt one and the same Vinaya, and they have in common the prohibitions of the five offences, and also the practice of the four noble truths. Those who venerate the bodhisattvas and read the Mahayana sutras are called the Mahayanists, while those who do not perform these are called the Hinayanists. Much of the early extant evidence for the origins of Mahayana comes from early Chinese translations of Mahayana texts. These Mahayana teachings were first propagated into China by Lokaksima, the first translator of Mahayana sutras into Chinese during the 2nd century. <laughs> <laughs> Scholarly views on historicity Some scholars take an agnostic view and consider the Mahayana sutras as an anonymous literature, since it cannot be determined by whom they were written, and only can be dated firmly to the date when they were translated into another language. Others such as A. K. Warder have argued that the Mahayana sutras are not historical. Andrew Skelton summarizes a common prevailing view of the Mahayana sutras. These texts are considered by Mahayana tradition to be Buddhavacana, and therefore the legitimate word of the historical Buddha. The Sravaka tradition, according to some Mahayana sutras themselves, rejected these texts as authentic Buddhavacana, saying that they were merely inventions, the product of the religious imagination of the Mahayanist monks who were their fellows. Western scholarship does not go so far as to impugn the religious authority of Mahayana sutras, but it tends to assume that they are not the literal word of the historical Sakamuni Buddha. 
Unlike the Sravaka critics just cited, we have no possibility of knowing just who composed and compiled these texts, and for us, removed from the time of their authors by up to two millennia, they are effectively an anonymous literature. It is widely accepted that Mahayana sutras constitute a body of literature that began to appear from as early as the 1st century BCE, although the evidence for this date is circumstantial. The concrete evidence for dating any part of this literature is to be found in dated Chinese translations, amongst which we find a body of ten Mahayana sutras translated by Lokaksima before 186 CE and these constitute our earliest objectively dated Mahayana texts. This picture may be qualified by the analysis of very early manuscripts recently coming out of Afghanistan, but for the meantime this is speculation. In effect we have a vast body of anonymous but relatively coherent literature, of which individual items can only be dated firmly when they were translated into another language at a known date. John W. Pettit, while stating, Mahayana has not got a strong historical claim for representing the explicit teachings of the historical Buddha, also argues that the basic concepts of Mahayana do occur in the Pali Canon and that this suggests that Mahayana is not simply an accretion of fabricated doctrines, but has a strong connection with the teachings of Buddha himself. Mahayana has not got a strong historical claim for representing the explicit teachings of the historical Buddha, its scriptures evince a gradual development of doctrines over several hundred years. However, the basic concepts of Mahayana, such as the bodhisattva ethic, emptiness sunyata, and the recognition of a distinction between Buddhahood and Arhatship as spiritual ideals, are known from the earliest sources available in the Pali Canon. This suggests that Mahayana was not simply an accretion of fabricated doctrines, as it is sometimes accused of being, but has a strong connection with the teachings of Buddha himself. Others such as D. T. Suzuki have stated that it doesn't matter if the Mahayana sutras can be historically linked to the Buddha or not since Mahayana Buddhism is a living tradition and its teachings are followed by millions of people, however weak the claim to historicity that the Mahayana sutras hold, this does not mean that all scholars believe that the Pali Canon is historical. <laughs> Beliefs of Mahayana Buddhists Some traditional accounts of the transmission of the Mahayana Sutras claims that many parts were actually written down at the time of the Buddha and stored for 500 years in the realm of the Nagas serpent-like supernatural beings who dwell in another plane of being. The reason given for the late disclosure of the Mahayana teachings is that most people were initially unable to understand the Mahayana Sutras at the time of the Buddha 500 BCE and suitable recipients for these teachings had still to arise amongst humankind. According to Venerable Suan Hua from the tradition of Chinese Buddhism, there are five types of beings who may speak the Sutras of Buddhism, a Buddha, a disciple of a Buddha, a Deva, a Rc, or an emanation of one of these beings, however, they must first receive certification from a Buddha that its contents are true dharma. Then these sutras may be properly regarded as the words of the Buddha SKT, Buddhavacana. Some teachers take the view that all teachings that stem from the fundamental insights of Buddha constitute the Buddha's speech, whether they are explicitly the historical words of the Buddha or not. There are scriptural supports for this perspective even in the Pali Canon. There the Buddha is asked how the disciples should verify, after his death, which of the teachings circulating are his. In the Mahaparinibbana Sutta DN 16, the Buddha is quoted as saying, There is the case where a bhikkhu says this, in the Blessed One's presence have I heard this, in the Blessed One's presence have I received this, this is the Dhamma, this is the Vinaya, this is the teacher's instruction, his statement is neither to be approved nor scorned. Without approval or scorn, take careful note of his words and make them stand against the Sutta's discourses and tally them against the Vinaya monastic rules. If, on making them stand against the suttas and tallying them against the vinaya, you find that they don't stand with the suttas or tally with the vinaya, you may conclude, this is not the word of the Blessed One, this bhikkhu has misunderstood it, and you should reject it. But if they stand with the suttas and tally with the vinaya, you may conclude, this is the word of the Blessed One, this bhikkhu has understood it rightly. Topic. The earliest extant Mahayana sutras 
Some scholars have traditionally considered the earliest Mahayana sutras to include the very first versions of the Prajnaparamita series, along with texts concerning Akshobhya, which were probably composed in the 1st century BCE in the south of India. Some early Mahayana sutras were translated by the Kushan monk Lokaksima, who came to China from the kingdom of Gandhara. His first translations to Chinese were made in the eastern Han capital of Luoyang between 178 and 189 CE. Some Mahayana sutras translated during the 2nd century CE include the following Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra Infinite Life Sutra Aksobhyantathagatejavyuha Sutra Ugrapariparsha Sutra Manjusraparaparsha Sutra Drumakinara Rajapariparsha Sutra Sarangama Samadhi Sutra Bhadrapala Sutra Ajatasatrakaukartiyavinodana Sutra Kasyapaparavarta Sutra Lokanuvartana Sutra An early sutra connected to the Avatamsaka Sutra. Some of these were probably composed in the north of India in the 1st century CE. Thus scholars generally think that the earliest Mahayana sutras were mainly composed in the south of India, and later the activity of writing additional scriptures was continued in the north. However, the assumption that the presence of an evolving body of Mahayana scriptures implies the contemporaneous existence of distinct religious movement called Mahayana, which may be wrong. Teachings. The teachings as contained in the Mahayana Sutras as a whole have been described as a loosely bound bundle of many teachings, which was able to contain the various contradictions between the varying teachings it comprises. Because of these contradictory elements, there are very few things that can be said with certainty about Mahayana Buddhism. Central to the Mahayana Sutras is the ideal of the Bodhisattva path, something which is not unique to them however as such a path is also taught in non-Mahayana texts which also required prediction of future Buddhahood in the presence of a living Buddha. What is unique to Mahayana Sutras is the idea that the term Bodhisattva is applicable to any person from the moment they intend to become a Buddha and without the requirement of a living Buddha. They also claim that any person who accepts and uses Mahayana sutras either had already received or will soon receive such a prediction from a Buddha, establishing their position as an irreversible bodhisattva. The central practice advocated by the Mahayana sutras is focused around the acquisition of merit, the universal currency of the Buddhist world, a vast quantity of which was believed to be necessary for the attainment of Buddhahood. The most important act for acquiring merit in these sutras is the listening, memorization, recitation, preaching, copying and worship of the Mahayana sutras themselves. Also, according to David Drew's other important features includes the practice of, anamodana, or, rejoicing, in meritorious actions or the teachings of Mahayana sutras, typically combined with the dedication of the resulting merit either to the attainment of Buddhahood or to all beings. Mahayana sutras also expound on the importance of the six perfections paramitas, as part of the path to Buddhahood, and special attention is given to the perfection of wisdom prajnaparamita, which is seen as primary, another innovative shortcut. To Buddhahood in Mahayana sutras are what are often called pure land practices. These involve the invocation of Buddhas such as Amitabha and Aksobhya, who are said to have created Buddha fields or pure lands, especially so that those beings who wish to be reborn there can easily and quickly become Buddhas. Reciting the Mahayana sutras and also simply the names of these Buddhas can allow one to be reborn in these places. Topic. Collections of Mahayana Sutras Topic. Bodhisattva Pitaka In the 4th century Mahayana Abhidharma work Abhidharma Samukkaya, a Sangha refers to the collection which contains the Agamas as the Sravaka Pitaka, and associates it with the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas. A Sangha classifies the Mahayana Sutras as belonging to the Bodhisattva Pitaka, which is designated as the collection of teachings for bodhisattvas. <laughs> Modern canons 
The Mahayana sutras survive predominantly in primary translations in Chinese and Tibetan from original texts in Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit or various Prakrits. Although there is no definitive Mahayana canon as such, the printed or manuscript collections in Chinese and Tibetan, published through the ages, have preserved the majority of known Mahayana sutras. Many parallel translations of certain sutras exist. A handful of them, such as the Prajnaparamita sutras like the Heart Sutra and the Diamond Sutra, are considered fundamental by most Mahayana traditions. The standard modern edition of the Buddhist Chinese canon is the Taisho Tripitaka, redacted during the 1920s in Japan, consisting of 85 volumes of writings that, in addition to numerous Mahayana texts, both canonical and not, also include Agama collections, several versions of the Vinaya, Abhidharma and Tantric writings. The first 32 volumes contain works of Indic origin, volumes 33 to 55 contain works of native Chinese origin and volumes 56 to 84 contain works of Japanese composition. The 85th volume contains miscellaneous items including works found at Dunhuang. A number of apocryphal sutras composed in China are also included in the Chinese Buddhist canon, although the spurious nature of many more was recognized, thus preventing their inclusion in the canon. The Sanskrit originals of many Mahayana texts have not survived to this day, although Sanskrit versions of the majority of the major Mahayana sutras have survived. <laughs> Brief descriptions of some sutras <laughs> Proto-Mahayana sutras Early in the 20th century, a cache of texts was found in a mound near Gilgit in Pakistan. Amongst them was the Ahitasena Sutra. This sutra appears to be a mixture of Mahayana and pre-Mahayana ideas. The text is set in a world where monasticism is the norm, typical of the Pali Suttas, there is none of the usual antagonism towards the Sravakas i.e., the early Buddhists or the notion of Arahantship, as is typical of Mahayana sutras such as the Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra. The Salastamba Sutra, rice stock or rice sapling sutra has been considered as one of the first Mahayana sutras. According to N. Ross Reed, this sutra has many parallels with the material in the Pali Suttas especially the Mahatana Sakaya Sutta, M1, 256–71, and could date as far back as 200 BCE. It is possible that this sutra represents a period of Buddhist literature before the Mahayana had diverged significantly from the doctrine of the early Buddhist schools. Topic: <laughs> Samadhi Sutras. Amongst the earliest Mahayana texts, the Samadhi Sutras are a collection of sutras that focus on the attainment of profound states of consciousness reached in meditation, perhaps suggesting that meditation played an important role in early Mahayana. These include the Pratyapana Sutra, Samadhiraja Sutra and Sarangama Samadhi Sutra. <laughs> Perfection of wisdom texts These deal with Buddhist wisdom, prajna, wisdom, in this context means the ability to see reality as it truly is. They do not contain an elaborate philosophical argument, but simply try to point to the true nature of reality, especially through the use of paradox. The basic premise is a radical non-dualism, in which every and any dichotomist way of seeing things is denied, so phenomena are neither existent, nor non-existent, but are marked by emptiness sunyata, and absence of any essential, unchanging nature. The perfection of wisdom in one letter illustrates this approach by choosing to represent the perfection of wisdom with the Sanskrit and Pali shorta or schwa, vowel, a. As a prefix, this negates a word's meaning, e.g., changing. Svabhava, with essence, to asvabhava, without essence. It is the first letter of Indic alphabets and, as a sound on its own, can be seen as the most neutral and basic of speech sounds. Many sutras are known by the number of lines, or slokas, that they contain. Sadharma Pundarika 
This sutra is called the Lotus Sutra, White Lotus Sutra, Sutra of the White Lotus or Sutra on the White Lotus of the Sublime Dharma, Sanskrit, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing Cn, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing, JP, Myoho Renge Kyo. Probably written down in the period 100 BCE to 100 CE, the White Lotus Sutra proposes that the three yanas (sravakayana, pratyekabuddhayana, and bodhisattvayana) are not in fact three different paths leading to three goals, but one path with one goal. The earlier teachings are said to be skillful means to help beings of limited capacities. The sutra is notable for the re appearance of the Buddha Prabhudaratna, who had died several eons earlier, because it suggests that a Buddha is not inaccessible after his parinirvana and also that his lifespan is said to be inconceivably long because of the accumulation of merit in past lives. This idea, though not necessarily from this source, forms the basis of the later doctrine of the three bodies trikaya. Later it became associated particularly with the Tiantai school in China Tendai in Japan and the Nichiren schools in Japan. The Ananta Nirdesa Sutra belongs to the Lotus Sutra category as well, and is also known as the Innumerable Meanings Sutra. This text was translated from Sanskrit into Chinese by Dharmajatayasas, an Indian monk of the 4th to 5th century. It belongs to the so-called Threefold Lotus Sutra that is also composed of the Lotus Sutra and the Sutra of Meditation on the Bodhisattva Universal Virtue. It was and is considered to be the prologue to the Lotus Sutra itself, and is therefore included into the canon of Tendai, some Nichiren Buddhist sects, and also Risho Kosei Kai. Also in the Lotus Sutra category is the Samantabhadra Meditation Sutra, which is also called the Sutra of Meditation on the Bodhisattva Universal Virtue. This Mahayana Buddhist text teaches meditation and repentance practices. It is considered by many Mahayana sects to be a continuation an epilogue of the Buddha's teachings found within the Lotus Sutra and is therefore included into the canon of some Nichiren Buddhist sects, and also Risho Kosei Kai. The Bodhisattva Samantabhadra universal virtue is portrayed in the 28th chapter of the Lotus Sutra as the protector of the Dharma teachings from every kind of persecution. Topic. Pure Land Sutras The Pure Land teachings were first developed in India, and were very popular in Kashmir and Central Asia, where they may have originated. Pure Land Sutras were brought from the Gandhara region to China as early as 147 CE, when the Kushan monk Lokaksima began translating the first Buddhist sutras into Chinese. The earliest of these translations show evidence of having been translated from the Gandhari language, a Prakrit descended from Vedic Sanskrit, which was used in northwest India. The Pure Land Sutras are principally the shorter Sukhavadivyuha Sutra, longer Sukhavadivyuha Sutra, and the Amatyardhyana Sutra. The shorter Sutra is also known as the Amitabha Sutra, and the longer Sutra is also known as the Infinite Life Sutra. These sutras describe Amitabha and his pure land of bliss, called Sukhavati. Also related to the Pure Land tradition is the Pratyatpana Samadhi Sutra, which describes the practice of reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha as a meditation method. In addition to these, many other Mahayana texts also feature Amitabha Buddha, and a total of 290 such works have been identified in the Taisho Tripit aka Pure Land texts describe the origins and nature of the Western Pure Land in which the Buddha Amitabha resides. They list the 48 vows made by Amitabha as a bodhisattva by which he undertook to build a pure land where beings are able to practice the Dharma without difficulty or distraction. The sutras state that beings can be reborn there by pure conduct and by practices such as thinking continuously of Amitabha, praising him, recounting his virtues, and chanting his name. These Pure Land Sutras and the practices they recommend became the foundations of Pure Land Buddhism, which focus on the salvific power of faith in the vows of Amitabha. The Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra In the Vimalakirti Sutra, composed some time between the 1st and 2nd century CE, the Bodhisattva Vimalakirti appears as a layman to teach the Dharma. This is seen by some as a strong assertion of the value of lay practice. A major theme is the non-duality of the Dharma. This sutra has been very popular in China and Japan. Confession Sutras 
The Triskanda Sutra and the Golden Light Sutra, Suvarnaprabhasa Sutra focus on the practice of confession of faults. The Golden Light Sutra became especially influential in Japan, where its chapter on the universal sovereign was used by Japanese emperors to legitimize their rule and it provided a model for a well-run state. The Avatamsaka Sutra This is large composite text consisting of several parts, most notably the Dasapumika Sutra and the Gandavyuha Sutra. It probably reached its current form by about the 4th century CE, although parts of it, such as those mentioned above, are thought to date from the 1st or 2nd century CE. The Gandavyuha Sutra is thought to be the source of a cult of Vairokana that later gave rise to the Mahavarokana Abhisambodhi Tantra, which in turn became one of two central texts in Shingon Buddhism and is included in the Tibetan canon as a Karya class tantra. The Avatamsaka Sutra became the central text for the Hua Yen JP. Kegon school of Buddhism, the most important doctrine of which is the interpenetration of all phenomena. Topic. Third Turning Sutras These sutras primarily teach the doctrine of representation only associated with the Yogacara school. The Sandhinirmokana Sutra is the earliest surviving sutra in this class. It divides the teachings of the Buddha into three types, which it calls the three turnings of the wheel of the Dharma. To the first turning, it ascribes the agamas of the sravakas, to the second turning the lower Mahayana sutras including the Prajna Paramita sutras, and finally sutras like itself are deemed to comprise the third turning. Moreover, the first two turnings are considered to be provisional in this system of classification, while the third group is said to present the final truth without a need for further explication natartha. The well-known Lankavatara Sutra, composed sometime around the 4th century CE, is sometimes included in this group, although it is somewhat syncretic in nature, combining pure Mahayana doctrines with those of the Tathagatagarbha system and was unknown or ignored by the progenitors of the Mahayana system. The Lankavatara Sutra was influential in Chan Buddhism. Tathagatagarbha class sutras these are especially the Tathagatagarbha Sutra, the Sramala Sutra, Sramaladevi Simanada Sutra, and the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, which is very different in character from the Pali Mahaparinibbana Sutta. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Collected Sutras. These two large sutras are, again, actually collections of other sutras. The Maharatnakuta Sutra contains 49 individual works, and the Mahasamnipada Sutra is a collection of 17 shorter works. Both seem to have been finalized by about the 5th century, although some parts of them are considerably older. <laughs> Esoteric Sutras Esoteric sutras comprise an important category of works that are esoteric, in the sense that they are often devoted to a particular mantra or dharani. Well-known dharani texts include the Usnisa Vijaya Dharani Sutra and the Kundi Dharani Sutra. Transmigration sutras a number of sutras focus on actions that lead to existence in the various spheres of existence, or expound the doctrine of the twelve links of dependent origination Discipline sutras These focus on principles that guide the behavior of bodhisattvas, and include the Kashyapa Parivarta, the Bodhisattva Pratimaksa Sutra, and the Brahmahala Sutra. For monastics, the Bequeathed Teachings Sutra is a necessary manual that guides them through the life of cultivation. <laughs> Sutras devoted to individual figures Ta large number of sutras describe the nature and virtues of a particular Buddha or Bodhisattva and their pure land, including Manyasri, Saitagarbha, the Buddha Aksobhya, and Bhisajyaguru, also known as the Medicine Buddha. Topic: 
Vipulya Sutras devoted to all Tathagatas The most widely used in liturgy of these is the Bhadra Kalpika Sutra, available in various languages Chinese, Tibetan, Mongolian, etc. in variants that differ slightly as to the number of Tathagatas enumerated. For example, the Khotanese version is the proponent of a 1005 Tathagata system. There is in use in the Shingon school a sutra naming some 10,000 Tathagatas, distinguishing the ones longer lived after enlightenment the same as in the approximately 1,000 in the Bhadra Kalpika as Sun Buddhas and the shorter lived ones as Moon Buddhas. See also Buddhist texts, Chan Buddhism Index of Buddhism-related articles List of sutras List of suttas Mahayana Secular Buddhism Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography Dutt, Nalinaksha 1978. Buddhist Sects in India, Mudalal Banararsadas, Delhi, 2nd edition Hirakawa, Akira, Groner, Paul A History of Indian Buddhism, from Sakamuni to Early Mahayana. Mudalal Banarsidas. ISBN 978-81-208-0955-0. Kano, Hiroshi Chinese Sutra Commentaries from the Early Period, Annual Report of the International Research Institute for Advanced Buddhology at Soka University, IRIAB, Vol. 6, 301-320 Macmillan Encyclopedia of Buddhism, Macmillan, 2004 McMahon, David Orality, Writing and Authority in South Asian Buddhism, Visionary Literature and the Struggle for Legitimacy in the Mahayana History of Religions. 37 249–274. 463504 Nakamura, Hajime Indian Buddhism, A Survey with Bibliographical Notes, 1st Edition, Japan, 1980. 1st Indian Edition, Delhi, 1987. ISBN 81-208-0272-1. Natier, Jan January 2003. A Few Good Men, The Bodhisattva Path According to the Inquiry of Ugra Ugrapariprasha, A Study and Translation. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 978-0-8248-2607-9. Pettit, John W. The 8th of February 2013. Mipham's Beacon of Certainty, Illuminating the View of Dzogchen, The Great Perfection. Wisdom Publications. ISBN 978-0-86171-719-4. Skilton, Andrew T. Dating the Samadhiraja Sutra. Journal of Indian Philosophy. 27 6, 635. Thich, Nyat Han. The Sutra on the Eight Realizations of the Great Beings. Parallax Press. ISBN 978-0-938077-07-7. Fond, Peter Mahayana Texts Translated into Western Languages, A Bibliographical Guide. E. J. Brill, Colne, ISBN 3-923956-13-4. Reeves, Jean A Buddhist Kaleidoscope, Essays on the Lotus Sutra. Kosei Pub. Co. ISBN 978-4-333-01918-2. Skilton, Andrew A Concise History of Buddhism. Windhorse. ISBN 978-0-904766-92-9. Walzer, Joseph. Genealogies of Mahayana Buddhism, Emptiness, Power and the Question of Origin. Routledge. Warder, A. K. Indian Buddhism. Mudalal Banarsidas, Delhi. Third Revised Edition. Topic. External links 
Bingenheimer, Marcus 2014. Bibliography of translations from the Chinese Buddhist canon into Western languages Buddhist scriptures in multiple languages Taisho Tripitaka. Mahayana canonical text titles and translations in English A complete Buddhist sutra collection Mahayana sutras Digital Sanskrit Buddhist canon Mahayana Buddhist sutras in English Budanet's ebook library English PDFs Complete English translation and analysis of the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra or PDF Bhadra Kalpaka Sutra 1 2 3 4 Sutras <laughs>